Hi everyone, this is Pastor Bob with the Sunday Sunset Reflection for July the 19th. We considered Psalm 57 this morning, and what a psalm that is. Just a couple of highlights here on our Sunday Sunset Reflection. First of all, let's just consider verse 1. That's really the place of, um, it's just a power-packed verse. It goes like this. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for in you my soul takes refuge in the shadow of your wings, Will I take refuge till the storms of destruction pass by? The first thing we'll notice is there's a little repetition, repetition there, repetition. That's what I'm getting at. The power of repetition versus vain repetition. Okay, he says, "Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me." Now the Lord Jesus Christ warned us about vain repetitions when we pray in the book of Matthew, chapter six. He says, "The, the heathen do this. They just." And power on more and more repetition, thinking they're going to be heard because of repetition or useless phrases. And sometimes Christians do that too. We say a lot of things just because we need filler, you know, we don't know what to say, and so we use these words. Stop the music, just uh, realize God knows what we have need of before we ask. Nevertheless, He still tells us to ask. Now, with the repetition here, be merciful to me, O God, be merciful. It's a way of underlining or bold typing what he's saying this is very important be merciful to me so he pleads for mercy from god and why does he plead for mercy because god is merciful and he's gracious and we realize we have nothing to bring but we need from him we plead for him mercy now there's also the seeking for refuge as david was finding refuge when he wrote this in the cave of adullam as we pointed out Interesting play on words. He was in a refuge, but he really sought for the real refuge and taking refuge in God. And notice the words they use, in the shadow of your wings. Now, David might have considered, as we pointed out this morning, the wings of God being the presence of God, the providence of God, and of course, the protection of God. Probably has something to do with all three. And then he uses that phrase, till the storms pass by. Storms of destruction pass by. Storms by God's providence all have an end, except for that one final storm that'll be a storm of God's wrath. But thanks be to God, through the Lord Jesus Christ, we escape the wrath to come. Well, we pointed out how David, rather than spend his time focusing on his problem, sought to praise God, as in verses 5 and 11, the chorus of both verses here reads like this, Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. So I'd encourage you to take a moment today and reread Psalm 57. And it's a great lesson for us when we feel isolated or alone. I encourage you to read it. And of course, check out the sermon link on our website, ccpconline.org, and listen again to the sermon, Psalm 57. Not because I preached it, but because it's some really good stuff, especially in the, what we're facing in quarantines and everything else today. Let's look at the Westminster Confession of Faith Shorter Catechism as we do here on the Sunday Sunset Reflection. Question number 12 reads like this. What did God's providence specifically do for man whom he created? The answer is, after the creation, God made a covenant with man to give him life. If he perfectly obeyed God, God told him not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, or he would die. I notice a few scriptures that the Westminster divines used to back up this answer of the shorter catechism. First of all, in Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, the Lord uh, took man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree in the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it, for the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. That's what God said. And of course, we read in James chapter 2 and verse 10, whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. Well, Adam sinned on this one point and is guilty of the whole law. Consequently, he passed the sin, uh, sin nature onto his posterity, which that includes us. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Question number 12, what did God's providence specifically do for man whom he created? The answer is, after the creation, God made a covenant with man to keep, give him life if he perfectly obeyed. God told him not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, or he would die. 
God has everything under control, of course, and even under control at this time. So we need not fear, but trust him just like Adam did not, but didn't listen to God and ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Well, Lord willing, Jan and I will be back here with another pastor's chat this next Tuesday. This past Tuesday, Jan had some dental work done, and we just didn't get it done. So the pastor's chat wasn't recorded. But the Lord willing, we'll be here uh, back this next Tuesday with another pastor's chat. Meanwhile, I think we have almost exhausted our questions. So we need some questions from the Bible. If you submit a question, uh, if we use your question on the pastor's chat, you'll win a croissant from Flying with Jerome. So send us your questions via Jan's email or message her via Facebook. Say again that it's really gratifying to receive your questions and prepare an answer, but let me say it again. We're looking forward to the time when we can be back to resume the Real Pastors Chat on our quarterly Sunday evening get gathering at our place to answer questions from our church family. Uh, look forward to that, but meanwhile, send us your questions by email to Jan or by Facebook message. Meanwhile, join us for the Zoom prayer meeting this coming Wednesday at 7 o'clock. It's a great time and a great way to keep in touch with other members of the flock. No matter what your level of participation, just being part of it by clicking on the link and being there with our Zoom prayer meeting will be a blessing to you and to others. Now, beginning Sunday, August the 2nd, that's a week from next coming Sunday, two weeks from today, we're changing what has been known as the active order of worship a bit. And the session of elders has talked this over knowing that we went into this trying to provide some form of resemblance to our Sunday morning worship service at 2310 Nursery Road uh, when we were in the quarantine time and we could not meet. Well, since then, we, since we do not have the resources of people or equipment to do live stream, we quickly assembled something to have in place. Now, we have since realized that we cannot provide a real substitute, a good substitute for the assembling of the saints together, for there is no substitute for that because, uh, well, that's what we're supposed to do, assembling ourselves together and, and not be like the manner of some that forsake the assembling of ourselves together, come together to worship God. Added to the fact that the present system takes much work on the part of the participants, clicking on the next link, being prepared, and... Uh, We've just found that the majority of people tuning in do not make use of all the segments. Plus, although it's uh, nice to have the songs, the added commercials by YouTube really take away from the desired message and the atmosphere that we wanted to create. So we are moving to a new format on Sunday, August the 2nd, in which we will have scripture, prayer, a sermon, a few announcements, and a benediction, all under one click. And we'll feel that this provides the best concession for those who cannot get out to uh, the service at 2310 Nursery Road uh, without providing a false substitute for the need to gather for the church body, together as the church body for corporate worship. Under our present restrictions and capabilities, of course, here's what we feel is best. So we'll try to um, connect and to encourage you in the word as, as we long for everyone to be back together soon, worshiping together in corporate worship. Until then, we'll be having this new format beginning to take place on Sunday, August the 2nd. Speaking of connecting, I encourage you to check out my weekly Power Break blog this coming week, it's, as well as each week. It's published on Monday morning on my website, www.bobbrewbaker.com. Tomorrow's blog is about seeking for and holding on to the truth. We all want truth, don't we? And that's rightly so, and so that's what we're talking about tomorrow. It's very, uh, well, meaning that we mean that it's a good source of blessing to check out, out, and I trust that it will be a blessing for you. And tomorrow on my website, bobbrewbaker.com, while you're there, click on my podcast uh, called the Power Break Plot Podcast, in which you can find uh, wherever you download podcasts, or you can find the link there on my website, bobbrewbaker.com. Again, I just stress that this is done, first of all, for members of our flock here at Christ Community Presbyterian Church. Now, I am grateful that my, both my blog and my podcast can reach hundreds of people each week at a distance, but my motivation, of course, is to minister to you and to each member of Christ Community Presbyterian Church with encouragement from God's Word. Well, I trust you've been encouraged today with our some Sunday Sunset Reflection. This is Pastor Bob with the Sunset Reflection today. Have a great week, everyone.
Godspeed.